from a year dollar perspective, we're taking a look at the seasonal chart going back here for 21 years, euro dollar, and notice that wherever it starts in December, uh, euro dollar tends to get that rise over the month of December, and then in January, boom, it uh, it tends to sell off, and that sell off takes it about back to that same place where December started. So whatever happens in December, we tend to get that unwound in the early part of the next year. That's a 21 year history. Let's see how it looks over the last 10 years. Over the past 10 years, again, very similar to that dollar index, you got two, about two thirds of the weighting of the dollar index is weighted towards Euro dollar. So we get a slide uptrend here going into the last half of the year. And then to begin the year, we get a little bit of a, a little bit of a downtrend. And then about midway through the month is when prices begin to take off to the upside. So, um, you know, very similar stories. Whatever happens in December tends to get unwound early the next year. Uh, in the case here for Euro dollar, it does tend to, to move up uh, a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, yeah, Samir, um, which rally are you talking about? Are you talking about the dollar index? Or are you talking about Euro dollar? Because uh, obviously they're they're inverse of one another. So here's a daily chart for Euro dollar. Again, we've got that uh, impulse wave where we're looking at one wave, two wave, three wave, four, and that we are. Um, well developed into wave five. We've got some very nice divergence between a wave three high and this proposed wave five, and even the last two bits here on um, last two humps higher on Euro dollar. We've got RSI divergence showing up down below. Okay, Samir, yeah, I'll get to your Dixie question here in just a moment. Um, so zooming in on Euro dollar uh, from that fourth wave low right here. Whoops, let me change that. From that fourth wave low right here. Uh, we're, once we can count five waves in place, then we know this trend is over. And so we've got uh, wave one higher, wave two. We have an extended wave three where we can count five waves in this Euro dollar third wave. And now wave four, don't know whether wave four finished up here or maybe we, you know, we get another little bit of softening that we saw earlier this week in wave four. Um, but either way, there, there might be a couple of more humps higher until uh, we reach that high. And, and then we start to see Euro dollar fall out of bed. Uh, it's possible, I have it listed here as an alternate, that this wave higher could just be wave three of five, meaning we get another little wave four and then another bump higher. So we might be a hump or two away from this actually being the high on Euro dollar. But the point of the matter is, is that most of the damage has been done to the upside. If there's any further progress higher, it's not going to be much. Uh, as a matter of fact, the price zone that we're looking at here is going to be 12380 to 12525. Uh, so that's going to be the, the price zone that we're looking at here on Euro dollar. Now, earlier today, Euro dollar did pop up to 123.50. So again, uh, if I'm looking to make a trade, I'm not going to want to buy Euro dollar. And especially if that's the trade that everybody else is stoking up, you know, thinking, oh man, this is a trend. Uh, Democrats are taking over Senate and, you know, it's going to mean more money printing. you will be able to do whatever they want. The dollar is going to collapse. Well, you know what, as I've already showed you on the dollar index, this trend is very, very mature using Elliott wave. And this trend is actually about to reverse and we're about to see the largest dollar, dollar rally in eight months. And so all this news that makes it seem like it's dollar weak might actually be the thing that fakes out a lot of folks and catches them on the wrong side of the trade. So again, very, very close here. Um, if you're looking for a level to, to keep an eye on uh, to help, you know, help with this analysis, you could extend this 
trend line out and when we start to break down below this trend line that could indicate that uh, you know perhaps a trend change is in place uh, nice divergence showing up down here on RSI so we've got euro dollar on that four hour chart um, so still holding up above this purple trend line kind of dancing along this midline um, got up to uh, one 123.50, so very close to this target zone up here. Uh, and, and the reason this target zone came into place is uh, using the harmonics of the market and uh, Fibonacci extensions, Fibonacci retracements, uh, measuring out the relationships of the waves because there tends to be um, a, a relationship between these waves. That's how we can come up with these targets. And so there is some harmony that uh, comes into play in that 23.80. Uh, up to 25, uh, 25, 25, 50, that zone. Uh, so that is, you know, if you look at it from that perspective, the high that we saw today, we're 30 to 140 pips away from the high with the potential of 116 as a target. So you're looking at uh, potentially 700 pips available to the downside with just a nominal number of pips available to the upside. The risk reward ratio is, is not um so samir i'm actually waiting for aussie dollar to collapse in all honesty well i don't know about a collapse um i mean the one thing that might help propel australian dollar towards that collapse is um you've got about 20 to 25 percent of imports into australia come from china and 20 to 25 percent of exports out of Australia go to China. So China's struggling, and so you might see uh, some issues with the value of the Australian dollar as a result of that Chinese relationship. But um, but I don't know about a collapse because I think all in all, eventually we'll see that weaker dollar. But I think we're going to see some strength before we come back and and really see that massive weakness coming in the, in the value of the U.S. dollar. Uh, let's see. So where might an invalidation level be? Um, so I mentioned earlier about how uh, clients of my courses, I talk about using breakout trades and the breakout trades are beneficial because in the case of Dixie, prices break out up above a resistance line. Well, then the, that proves to you that the market's moving in the direction you thought it was going to go. Um, and if the market ends up becoming a runaway train to the downside, then at that point, um, you haven't entered into the trade and so you haven't lost anything. So that's the beauty of, of the practicality of using, uh, using breakout trades is that breakout trades can keep you away from some losing trades, not all, but some. So where would the invalidation be here? Uh, I think it's worthwhile to zoom out to a daily chart and um, you know, because this, this could be wave A of a zigzag, um, you know, the trend is, is to the downside on a larger time scale than what we're looking at here. Um, and so when might I change my mind on this? Um, I, would, I would probably use Euro dollar as that proxy. Um, there's another level of resistance coming up 129 to 130 on Euro dollar. Um, yeah, see here. See this black trend line? This black trend line goes all the way back to 2008. And so it's quite possible that what we'll see on Euro dollar is that we'll see prices come back down here and retest this trend line. And by the time it does it, it'll probably be near where this previous wave four is and, and then continue to work itself higher uh, from there. So I think this is what we're gonna see since it's the first wave of a potential zigzag or larger impulse. Um, it, the invalidation level to prove that this is wrong, uh, I really don't have one in mind, Samir, because what if this becomes an extended fifth wave? I don't think it will, 
because then you'd have an extended third and an extended fifth. Uh, and so if we were to really extend higher, then that would tell me that something's something's way off here. I've, I've missed the boat on something. I've missed something. So, um, uh, but yeah, if we just check out this chart, um, actually, let me go back to the to the presentation because the presentation has it spelled out uh, a lot cleaner. Okay, so what I've done here on Euro Dollar, and, and so I just showed you that black line, and how on this black line, I think we'll come back down here and you know retest and then move higher from there. So I think that's what will end up happening. Um, but something really interesting here, you know, we've I, I've I've had this trend line in place for several years. Basically, you connect these two lows, and then you've got a, a breakout level, and then what was support acted like new resistance in 2018. I've had that trend line in place for a long time. And then as I was looking at these larger patterns, one pattern that stood out to me was like, you know, I wonder if this is like uh, an A. A, B. And then a C flat. So this pattern, this ABC, would be a flat pattern. And I've had that in mind for a long time. So three waves up, three waves down, and then you've got an impulse wave higher. So ABC flat. I've had that in mind for a long time. And, um, and then from there, we had our steep correction, um, which technically, you know, there's a couple different ways to look at this. But that correction could have ended right here at this low. I'll, I'll talk more about that here in a moment. Um, and then what if we're doing another ABC higher, another flat? Like, what if this becomes a double flat? And so in that case, you know, we could have something like A here. And then B here. And then C up here. So what if this ends up being a double flat pattern? Well, if this is a double flat pattern, then the beginning of wave, uh, the beginning of this whole pattern, and then the beginning of the next pattern, you know, we should be able to connect that with the trend line. Well, lo and behold, guess what? I connected with the trend line and I'm like, well, daggum, that thing's pretty parallel to this line up here, which had been in place for many, many years. So my point being is one of the patterns that I've got in mind here is that this is a double flat. So we have ABC and then X wave and then another ABC flat pattern. Now this pattern might carry up to 129 to 130. If it doesn't pause near the current levels, it might extend up to that 129 to 130. Um, Beyond that, there's a couple of other patterns at play that, that again, suggest we may see some weakness down to this one, 116 level. Um, another, another chart I want to share with you here real quick. So I've been following Euro Dollar for many years. Um, I've, I've written about it, uh, my former life at Daily FX. And so these, each of these notes that are made within Euro dollar, each of these notes, um, do have a source document. So if you're interested in what that source document is, uh, let me know and I'd be happy to, you know, send that off to you. But, you know, starting back into 2017, this is all based on Elliott wave and, and market geometry, but, um, Back in 2017, you know, thinking that a correction to 116 followed by a retest of, of 120. Well, a few weeks later, we did get that retest to 115.54, and we eventually got that retest of 120 or higher. Uh, but as we were approaching the end of this, um, I had made the mention fourth wave is maturing as expected, final wave to higher uh, to retest 120 and possibly 122. Well, it obviously carried a lot higher than what I thought. And so that that could be the risk that we're seeing here is that although I'm thinking we're close to the end, it, it may end up getting carried away with itself and it might move up to that 129 to 130 level. Uh, but here um, it did end up stopping. And then about, I think it was about eight or 10 days before the actual high, I had posted this mark 
are, um, and this is all publicly available. Uh, Euro dollar is very close to com completing a three-year Elliott wave expanded flat pattern. A bearish reversal has initial target of 115 and a secondary zone of 109 to 112. So that was written in February of 2018, well before the price action took place. And it ended up you know, hitting the low end of that target, just below 109. And then uh, on October the 1st of 2019, a large bullish rally to 118 and possibly 122 is the next anticipated move. Now, that was October of 2019. I did not anticipate COVID. And so COVID did kind of create for some volatile moves in here. But in the end, notice how this next wave higher did carry up, you know, up above that 122 mark. So again, it's using Elliott wave and the market's geometry to suggest where prices might go. Uh, in the case of COVID and 2020, yeah, it was not a direct path. But in the end, it, it ended up getting to where it needed to go, according to Elliott Wave Theory. And uh, from there, I thought this was going to be the high um, back here um, earlier or just a few months ago. I thought this was going to be the high. I did sell off a little bit. Um, but then um, in, in uh, October, I think it was October 9th. Uh, that was a part of the Elliott Wave Re Weekly report as well that I put into the chat box. Um, you know, I thought we we're going to get another rally back above that 120, and it has carried a little bit higher than I suspected. But here's the here's the zone that I'm looking at. Uh, it may carry to 123.80 to 125.25, but it's about to experience its largest largest correction since March 2020. Uh, so I don't know whether it is going to you know correct down here to that 116 level or whether it carries on up to that 129 to 30. But, uh, but as you can see, here's some of the larger trend changes that have taken place over the last couple of years uh, with regards to um, with regards to uh, euro dollar, which is something that I've been following. And again, if you're interested in those, by all means, you can um, hit me up and I'll send those source documents out to you. But there is something that I want to share with you, and that is, um, I, this euro dollar, US dollar forecast for the year is not the only forecast that I've got available. Uh, I've also got this outsized market moves of 2021. And uh, this is where I, I actually handpick three markets, uh, three markets of which I feel will have an outsized move coming up for the year. Now I had written and published those. So I did a pre-sale on it back in early, uh, or mid-December, and uh, published those last Sunday and Monday. And uh, so far, one of them is a currency market, and that currency market is uh, is essentially flat. It's down 0.2%. Um, but the other two markets are up. They've started to take off a little bit. Uh, one's up about 20 21%. The other one's up about 30%. Um, based on the target levels that I've got for those, um, I, I am looking at higher levels. Than where it's at so the train is leaving the station but it's not complete the trend is not completely over in my opinion uh so if you're interested in those you can um you can grab this there should be a um an offer showing up on the sidebar uh the the 136 hours that would be the amount of time uh that this coupon is available normally it runs 34.99 and i've got a 10 percent discount um, for y'all being a participant of the webinar. So if you're interested in that, you can grab that and uh, I'll be providing six updates to this. So whether the trends end up turning out good or end up you know, turning out bad, I'm still gonna be providing some updates so that you can see from an Elliott Wave perspective how the view and the perspective on the market has evolved. Much like with that Euro dollar chart I showed you a moment ago, um, update number five, or I guess note number five on it was, I thought Euro dollar was going to work itself back down to 106. That was in September. Well, since then I've changed my tune and thinking, okay, Euro dollar is going to go through a correction, but I still think there's going to be higher levels coming on Euro dollar. And so that type of an evolution of viewing the market through the lens of Elliott wave, I think is what a lot of people are missing because we just see what is the analysis at this point. 
but they ne we never follow up and see how that analysis evolved. They're like, oh, that guy's a knucklehead. He was wrong. Or, wow, that guy's brilliant. He got it right. Um, so, but I, I do think that in order to be an efficient Elliott Wave technician, you need to see how, how things evolve to the good and to the bad. Yeah. Um, yeah, Anthony, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, the forecast on the Aussie dollar. Um, I think I, I think that was made in January. I think I did that in January a couple of years ago. Uh, the wave ended up completing um, at 58. And since then, it looks like a wave three or a three wave move up. Um, you know, Australian dollar uh, is, is not the, the topic of this webinar. Um, I have it hasn't been real clean. Quite honestly, um, Euro dollar and dollar index um, have been two of the more cleaner uh, Elliott wave charts in NFX. Um, so I do have another FX chart that I've got included in, um, in these three to uh, top market trends report. Uh, so I've got, uh, I've got another FX market in there. And and it's 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 a fairly clean one as well, uh, but uh, for some reason Australian dollar I haven't been able to catch the sniff on it, like or the scent like I have for uh, Euro dollar. But um, but yeah, I do have. Uh, I don't know um, if anybody in the room here. I haven't looked at at the attendee list, um, but I I do uh, what I call quick results calls. And in that, if you want to see what a forecast is for a specific market, and if we want to talk about it in depth, then I do offer that. It's a, it's a 30 minute call for $89. And I do, um, a lot of times it ends up being a little bit longer, like 45 minutes. Um, but then, uh, yeah, I'll go out and, and I'll look and, and really put together an Elliott Wave analysis for you, if that's what you're interested in. And, um, and we could talk about that or any other markets that you'd be interested in. So I'll just throw that out into the chat box. It's called a, uh, a quick results call. And, uh, you know, you can email me about that one or any others, um, you know, if you're uh, any other questions you may have. So that's learn to at seethewaves.com is my email address. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Juan. Uh, already subscribed to it. It's really good. Yep. Thank you, sir.